Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about how to pick tubes for yourself and get rid of some rumors. Uh, look, I'm going to break this down into three parts. Preamp tubes and small signal tubes, power tubes, and getting rid of some rumors, okay? But, uh, you know, what's the reason for this video? We we Years ago, we started developing a way for people to pick out tubes, and that is using reviews. And we're trying to make that better and better and better, and we really need your help. Look. I would love to take phone calls to talk about tubes, but I mean, they take forever. I get a lot of people that call up and they go, I used to talk to Kevin. Back in uh, 1992, Kevin would answer the phone all the time and I would, you know, da -da -da, and I go, look, back in the 90s, I used to be an inch taller and I used to have hair. Things have changed since then. And I would, frankly, I would rather, First off, I never told you what tubes to use. I might make a suggestion and then what people would do is they would want to argue with me because they went to some forum somewhere and read some tube lore. And they go, well, that's not what I read. And uh, I mean, that's how I would spend my time. I can't talk about tubes. I got to work on getting you guys the best stuff in audio. I mean, the kind of stuff I'd want to buy. I just cannot. And uh, my employees can't do it. They're not qualified. And the thing is, you're asking a question that doesn't have an answer anyway. Look, it's like when somebody calls up and they go, I want the best sounding speaker. Show me the best speaker. Speakers are a different thing because speakers are so predictable and my experts know them inside and out. So we simply ask you, what did you have in the past? What you liked, what you didn't like, and why? You got to think about what it is that's going on in your system. Then go to our website and pick out tubes based on the reviews of other people. That's the way it has to be. You got to think about what is bothering you in your system and then look for keywords from other people to find out if they perceive a tube to be a little bit smoother and so on. But the thing is that even though a tube reacts a certain way in one product doesn't mean it's going to react that way in another one. The other thing is, I got to say this to you, tubes have to be left alone for hundreds of hours before you evaluate them. That is really important and I do not want you to be pulling tubes out, then sticking another one in, and then turning your preamp on to see if the, what the difference in sound is. It is absolutely worthless to do that. And you can stand a chance of damaging the tube sockets. Tube sockets work by scraping the pins of the tube. And every time you go in and out nervously, like uh, some kind of a crazy person, you are gonna be loosening those sockets and then you're gonna be degrading sound and you won't even know it and you don't wanna do that. So look, just if you buy a new pair of tubes, put them in, let them settle in for a few days, leaving the component on, and then see if you can make, get a baseline on that and then put a review up on our website. But really, tubes have to be run for hundreds of hours before you evaluate them. They're always, always gonna be hyper and crazy. And then if you take them out of a component, this is true. If you take tubes out and put them in a drawer for a year or even months and put them back in, they're going to go through that process again. So just relax and have fun, okay? So how do you pick out tubes? Okay, you got to know something. Sometimes people go, I tapped on this tube and it makes noise. It must be a microphonic tube. No, that means that it's a gain tube and you should never tap any tube, period, ever, end of story. Don't do that. You got to look. go to the owner's manual for your component. Now, if you've got a Prima Luna, we've done all the work for you to explain all this. Go to the Prima Luna website. Really important. There's a tab there that says vital info. And we explain everything about tube rolling and we really make it simple. If you don't have a Prima Luna, then you'll have to do a little more work. You got to find out where the gain tube is. And typically, hopefully, they're going to be up front and center in your preamp or in your power amp. And then the other tubes are going to have different jobs. In a power amp, they might be what's called a driver tube. In a preamp, they could be what's called a cathode follower. But the gain tube, whether it's in a preamp or a power amp, that's where the rubber meets the road. And if you can figure that out, it's going to be helpful. My employees cannot help you with that. They cannot. But if you don't know, then what you got to do is buy a, a grade of tube that is appropriate. Just spend a little more money and either get a gold, 
or a platinum grade or Kevin Stash grade. Do not buy a driver forward slash DAC forward slash buffer grade. That lower grade of tube that we sell, they are amazing tubes. They are going to be quiet. Look, this is a dual triode tube. This is an Amperex 7308. And so what that means is there's literally two triodes. There's two tubes in the envelope. So when we test them, we're gonna to listen to triode number one. First, we're gonna to listen to it for noise. Then we're gonna judge it for microphony in a simulated phono stage. And if everything is good there, hell yeah. Then we go to triode number two. And if it's great for noise, then it's microphonic, then it's not gonna pass as a gold, platinum, or Kevin Stash tube. Every tube is different. Everyone, and that's why when I started this company, I said, no matter what we do, I want to create a way to listen to each small signal tube in circuit and grade them appropriately so people really have faith that we're doing our job and they're getting a quality product. And we continue to do that. Every tube first goes through a burn-in and then, but even at that, it's not broken in. We have to make sure that the tubes are hot. So that way we can really judge them for microphony. And then every one of these tubes that I have in my hand, they are put into a simulated phono stage, a high gain circuit that is similar to a phono stage. So we're really driving them and we can really see what they're up to. Then you got two measurements for triode number one, triode number two. So a gold grade tube is gonna have a good triode balance. A platinum grade two is gonna be even tighter for triode balance. And then Kevin Stash, if it's available and it's not always available, is gonna be the very, very cream of the crop. Now, I wanna explain something really quick, that if you buy some tubes from us and, and it's a small signal tube and they flash when you turn on your preamp, don't worry about that. We put a frequently asked question sheet in with your tube order. European tubes oftentimes will flash because that's just what they do. So if it's a Mullard or an Amperex or a European Philip, uh, Phillips, depending on where it is in your component, the first tube in the circuit can flash. And all of that is, is, a, is the filament of the tube. There's a, there can be resistance in the filament. And then as the current starts to flow, the flash goes away. Something else I wanna say is sometimes people see tubes and this tube has a little heater sticking up and this one glows more than that one does. Or my old tubes, they used to uh, have that glow on top and the new ones I bought from you, they don't. Well, that's just because the heater doesn't, look, every tube is handmade. So if you look at a KT88, there's gonna be a, a filament that sticks up through the, that's the heater, sticks up through the cathode. And when it's being assembled, that heater can stick up a little bit more in this tube than it does in that tube. So you'll see more of a glow. The filaments never fail. Got that? Filaments almost never, ever, ever, ever fail. So if you don't see a light, but the tube is working, then don't worry about it because really it's just like a light bulb. So don't call up and say, I don't, if the tube is working, I can assure you, and you're getting sound from your amp, I can assure you that the tube is working fine even if you don't happen to see that glow because every tube is different. Sometimes you'll see the glow, sometimes you won't. Now let's talk about power tubes for just a moment. You gotta do what the manufacturer says. You've got to. Uh, if you wanna know if you can put KT120s into your amp, Ask the manufacturer. My employees cannot tell you that. 95% of the time, it's just fine. KT120s draw about 15% more filament current than a KT88 does. And I can, I really can't think of any instances where you can't do that, but some manufacturers will still tell you you can't, and I don't wanna get into that tussle with people. I want you to be happy and I don't want to have drama, so you gotta ask the manufacturer. You cannot necessarily put an EL34 into a KT88 or KT120 hole, right? Even if they tell you you can, 
they may not hold up quite as well because an EL34 is a little bit smaller dissipation tube than a KT88 is. So be kind of cautious about that. Some amps run the bejesus out of tubes. I mean, we've talked about this. You know, if you go to the Primalina website, again, there's a tab that says Vital Info, and it talks about low power yet better bass. Learn about that. Wattage. If you've got a, a Prima Luna and it's 36 watts from EL34s and you think you're going to get better sound by going to 42 watts and using KT120s, you are wrong. You are wrong. The difference in power is negligible. You're only using like 5 watts of power. If you're going to get different sound by using KT120s, but you're not going to get an improvement because of more power because you're not going to use the power anyway. And I just got to stress that because people have a lot of funny ideas about uh, power. If you don't know about biasing your amp, don't go. Prima Lunas are all, they have a very ingenious, amazing uh, computerized biasing system, right? I mean, it's, it's incredible. But if you have an amp from another manufacturer, know this. If you buy a set of eight, we're going to send you out a match set of eight. So they should be able to plug right in as long as you adjust the bias. And if you don't know what that means, you got to get your manual out. Please get your manual out. You just can't take power tubes and plug them in. Now with little small signal tubes, yes, there's no adjustments for those. Usually there's... A couple of real weird outliers out there, the Sonic Frontiers Line 3 that sometimes you can that you can make adjustments with to fine tune. Typically small signal tubes, there's zero adjustments to be made. Power tubes there is, and if you don't do it, you could be in for a world of trouble. Now, 5AR4s don't need to be matched. That's not how that works. That's a rectifier tube. Again, you got to use what the manufacturer says that you can use. Now, I want to just dispel a couple of rumors real quick. This tube is an Amperex 7308PQ. Oh my God, does that mean it's premium quality? No, it just means it was sold in a store. I mean, look, if they made them for retail sale, it was PQ. And if they made them for the Navy, they were marked USN or Joint Army Navy, which is Jan. Now, if you think that PQ is going to be a higher grade than what they sell the military, are you kidding me? No, PQ is kind of like an Oldsmobile Cutlass Custom Deluxe, right? Oh, yeah, that's my 1985 Oldsmobile Custom Deluxe. Oh, did they make that? custom for you? Oh, oh yeah. No, they didn't make it. For, it's just a label that they stuck on it. It's the same thing here. Oh, I want to mention something else. The Apparex 7316. So, you know, the 7308 is supposed to be a low noise version of the 6922. And that's, you know, not even that true itself because there's some horrible 7308s. 7316 Apparex. People say it's a low noise 12A U7. Well, obviously, those people telling you that have never read the Amperex tube manual because it says that it was designed for circuits with rapid, with rapid cutoff and uh, circuits where low noise and microphony was not important. So it's very, very funny. It wasn't designed for low noise and microphony at all. The 7316 was designed for circuits where they get switched on and off a lot, which was back in the days of early you know, early computers and uh, oscilloscopes, I mean, things where uh, the tube had to be cycled a lot. Older is better. All right. Let's talk about this for a moment, okay? Let's look at the Amperex 6922 with the pinched waist. They made it that way to reduce microphony. That tube is the most microphonic tube I have ever measured in my life. And that's why they stopped making them with the pinched waist. Let's think about it. They made that tube in 1958. They only made them that way for about a year and a half. And they stopped doing it because it didn't work. Then in 1960, they went to just the regular tall bottle. And that wasn't that great either. Then they went to the shorter bottle. So think about it. Come on, use your noggin. They weren't trying to make tubes worse. These were military contracts. I mean, this was the Cold War, for God's sakes. 
You think they were trying to make things worse with these contracts at stake? Of course not. Frame grid tubes like the 6922 were a brand new deal back then, and they were just figuring it out. I remember I had these, I'll see if I can find a picture to show you. Siemens 6922 made in, I still remember the month, they were made in July of 1962 in Air Force boxes. They were the most beautiful packaging I've ever seen outside of a Tektronix packaging. And when I saw them, I was sporting one. I go, oh my God, these are gonna be amazing. And I started measuring them and they were kind of wonky and I go, shit, you know? So I said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try it in my preamp. So I plucked a couple of them into my preamp and I just let them cook. And they went to hell in a handbasket. I mean, just, I'd have to say half of them, one triode would, would just drop out. So this whole thing about older is better, I gotta get 1950s, you know, don't put too much weight on that. I mean, I, it just bothers me because I think people are being taken advantage of. Look, if a tube is really expensive, it doesn't mean that it's better, it means that it's rarer. I did this article, I helped these guys at Vacuum Tube Valley years ago. They wanted me to send, this was a long time ago. They wanted me to send them samples. And I said, okay, I'm gonna send you this really rare 12 AU7. I shouldn't send it to you because I've only ever seen two of them in my entire life, period. And no one is ever gonna find them. So it's kind of ridiculous to put them into an article. Every time I would say that, that tube in their mind was the best tube because it was unfindable. Don't get into that mode too much. I mean, don't. I, have, I mean, I know it's fun. Maybe I shouldn't even bum you out, but you know, I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, that's what we try to do at Upscale Audio, right? I want to treat your system like it's ours. So please, go to our website. If you buy tubes from us, make sure that you put up a review. Tell us what the equipment is, what your speakers were, and what your opinions are after they've broken in for hundreds of hours. And that way we help other people. This is a community of cool people and I love you guys so much. I wish I could help it out, but look, I got great people. So go to our website, give us a call, come to our beautiful 26,000 square foot store and, and uh, we'll treat your system like it's ours. Thanks.